I lived in Turkey with the Kurds for about a year. While I was there, I learned a lot of interesting little techniques. One of the things they showed me was something that, well, it dates way back to the time of the Ottoman Empire. And what it was called was the Ottomani Sun Compass. It's basically just a couple of pieces of wood, a few pieces of string. This is the Ottomani Pocket Sun Compass. It's just two pieces of wood and some string. Pretty simple little gadget. But before I show you how this thing uh, goes together, I want to give you another word. The word is Lee. <laughs> Northerly, southerly, easterly, westerly. You see, most of the primitive direction finding techniques, with the exception of celestial, give you directions kind of in the direction you want to go, in a northerly direction or a southerly direction. None of these things are going to give you things that are going to be within one or two degrees. In fact, most of the ones that are based on the sun sometimes can cause you to walk in a giant circle. And this is true particularly up on the North Pole or down on the South Pole. But let me show you how this one works. It's made of two pieces of wood, as I said, and some string. Now the string comes from the mini kit or the survival kit that you had that you saw in volume three. This is the stuff out of the parachute cord. And the wood can be any wood you find in the wilderness. And all I've done is I've made a little indicator post here that plugs into the flat board and it hangs from the string. And the way you use it is this. I simply rotate the flat board until the shadow from the indicator post touches the east-west line here, like so. And that's east-west. This is a north-south line right through there. Each one of these lines that you see drawn on the outside was put on there during a different trip to the wilderness. One of the things that uh, we all know is that the length of the day changes through the year. Uh, during the summer it's going to be very, very long and the sun is higher in the sky. That means that the first line here will be closer to the vertical post. However, later on in the year, towards the winter, that post will be casting a very, very long shadow even at midday. So this one here would be made sometime out in the winter. The main point here is that this thing should be reset several times if you're going to be out for a month or two or three. Once we've got it set up though, it'll give you a northerly or a southerly direction pretty easily in just a few moments. Pull it out of your pocket, hold it by the string, rotate it until the shadow touches, and you're on your way. Now let me show you how you make one of these. First you need to find a piece of wood about as wide as your fist. That's about four knuckles. And then with your handy dandy Swiss Army knife, start sawing. Now that I have my piece of wood, saw it off at about the length we want, I'm going to need to cut a little board out of the center of this. For a little bit of safety, I've left a branch on the side of the hunk. So if I decide that I want to use my, my knife here and, and whack like so, my hand is on the opposite side from the side I'm cutting on. But this is really the hard way to do it. Let me show you a trick that kind of speeds up splitting a hunk of wood out of a block like this. And all it requires is that you have your your knife located where you want it to be, something like that, and another piece of wood. In this case, I've taken a piece of fresh willow. And this is going to be like a little hammer. Now, what I, I could use other things, you know, I, I could use a, a rock, but that would ruin my blade. Let me just show you what I'm going to do. See how easy that is? I've gone and split a nice flat piece off of here. All I need to do now just trim that up a little bit. And I've got a nice flat front face for my compass. I'm going to do the same thing back here now and make a piece of wood. Okay, now I've got a, a piece of wood here and I'm going to make the pointer. If you remember from volume one, you put your thumb over the piece of wood you want to cut, you turn the wood in towards your hand, the blade slices right in, gives you a nice clean cut. This should be about two and a half, two and a half inches in length. Diameter, you can adjust with the other side of the blade. So I'll just go ahead and get this prepared.
The next step is going to be to use the awl on your Swiss Army knife to drill a little hole. It's going to be in about a half an inch or so from the edge and about the center of the piece of wood. Try to be sure that when you drill the hole, you drill in so that the post will go in vertical to the board. You can see that the drill is going in straight like that. Now that my hole's been drilled all the way through, I've got my vertical post roughed out. So I'll just push that down into the hole, like so, until it bottoms out at the bottom, like so. And we've got the basics of the sun compass ready to go. Anytime you want to take it out, you can just mm, rotate it, uh, grind a little bit, and it comes right out. I make the vertical post about two knuckles long, measured just like this. You want to make the post sharp, like a little spike on one end. So I'll kind of carefully whittle this down into a, a point. That point makes it more accurate. It's a little easier to to see where the shadow terminates if you've got a, a good sharp point to work with. So we'll bring her down here a little bit, like so. Now we have the basic compass. We've got the, the pointer in place and we've got the board itself. And it would actually work. The problem with these at this point is if you're to make that horizontal line, which I'll show you in a little bit, what's going to happen is if you have the angle of this thing changed in any way when you're taking a reading, it'll change the position of the shadow with respect to the line that you draw. So it needs to stay at the same level each time you take a reading. You could accomplish that in a number of different ways. If you've got a perfectly flat piece of wood, you could actually float it on the surface of a real calm pond or in a, in a glass of water. Or if you're in a big wide open desert and the sand is very flat, you could lay it on that. Or you could do, as I was showing you earlier, suspend it from a series of lines so that it always returns to the same level. In the original model I showed you, I was suspending the compass from four different points, cords drawn in from each of the corners. In the new one, we're just going to use three points, one here in the center and one on each corner there. It really doesn't make any difference how many lines you suspended by, just so long as it always returns to the same level you started with when you made the reading. Now that both of the corners are cut off back here, I'm going to remove the vertical post and I'm going to cut my first notch right in the center in front of where the post is going to go. This will be the first of the suspension lines. All done. Now this is not a uh, precise piece of work. In fact it doesn't need to be. All we're trying to do is to get a general lee direction. Northerly, remember? So I've got the three cuts I've got the place for my post, and I'm all set to cut to tie the lines together. This is some of the parachute cord you saw in volume three when we were putting together the survival kits. And as you remember, the parachute cord had some individual lines in the center. Well, I'm just going to withdraw three of these by stripping off the outer casing. So I've got three cords from which to suspend the compass. I'll take the tip of these three cords, tie a little knot in them, like so. Doesn't make any difference what kind of a knot you tie. And then turn the compass over. I'll take one of these cords and pass it through each of the slots that I cut in the wood. Here we go. If I get my fingers to work, everything would be great. There we go. And that's it. Now it's suspended. Now each time I should be able to hit that same kind of level with this. In order to be certain that the compass is going to be landing on the cord in the same way each time I assemble it, what I'll do is I'll take the knot and index it on the center cut. You can see it right here. As long as it's in that position, these cords will always remain to the, uh, return to the same position. So we'll turn it back over and suspend it, and it'll always return in the same place.